Good day for you as well. I got some more TVs. BPC. But this is actually an Australian assembled one. An Australian assembled Panasonic. I look for the grill, the vent, and it's got a Thompson brand CRT. So it's possibly made in one of the Western countries. I gotta take the back if I confirm. Could be um, American or, or um, European made tube, but we'll verify that when I put it back off. This one's got a genuine Sanyo tube. It's one of those bulletproof screen TVs. For someone who plays video games and gets angry and throws a controller at the screen, this is a TV for you. It's a very strong CRT. If you were in a gunfight, you'd hide behind one of these TVs. It would probably save your life. It is a one inch thick bloody screen. That's what you want. So, yeah. <laughs> when the zombie apocalypse comes and everyone's gun fighting, they'll be hiding behind one of these bloody TVs any day and <laughs> save your life. Super thick glass. You don't get TVs with unbreakable screens like that anymore. <laughs> Sanya made in Indonesia. This is one of the very dead set last of them when they really uh, just didn't care quality. Just smash it together and piss it off out of the factory. DVD input too. So, um, yeah. a very slim tube. This is a very last of them. This sort of been made probably 2005, 2006, possibly 2006. A HD, I want to get a HD, HD CRT TV. People actually want those around here. They'll ask, if it's got a HDMI input, they'll take it, even if it's a CRT TV. They're actually worthwhile keeping a HD one of these. Because a picture is much better than any flat panel TV. And this is the Malaysia made Panasonic, is an earlier one. Ah, uh, mid to late 90s. So, yeah, good little, uh, little portable, little keeper. Let's pull this one apart. Let's have a look to confirm the, uh, oh, another thing. These models, some of them had a, a woofer in the back of this model TV. Not many of them did, though. This happens to be a mono. Whether if you find a stereo one of these, it'll have a nice big woofer at the back here. So, that was something I, was, I really liked about these TVs. The old one had a woofer. I know the ones at our school when I was going to school in year um, when I was in year seven to year ten. They had this very model. One had a big woofer in this little speaker wheel here, and it was a had a stereo input. I mean, yeah, already. Duh. I mean, had, had more, uh, another set of inputs. I mean, so I did that stereo. Duh. Had a, a third AV input on some models. But yeah, be a bonus getting a good wolf out of one of these TVs. If you see one of these TVs on the side of the road, you, chances are you might get lucky. Have one that's got a wolf in the back. It's quite a nice looking spe beefy speaker. Anyway, let's open it up, dust it out, and give it a check and test. Hmm. Kind of unusual little uh, arrangement there. Look at that. How they mounted the um, deflection coil. That makes um, aligning a TV in a manufacturing process easier, doesn't it? Wow. Yeah. Nothing plugged into it. That's kind of a mystery. It goes around this little bit here. That's interesting. Some sort of electronic iron chuck this TV in head as a feature. <sighs> unusual. Very unusual. CIB, whatever that is, some sort of bloody halal certification or something, I don't know. 99 slash 50 to 77. Uh, date code possibly. Let's see. Uh, 1998 is the earliest date. Yeah, 1999. 1998, 1999. Yeah, late 90s. Check that out. Made in Australia. That's something you don't see anymore. Yeah. Something that's worth keeping these TVs now. Especially the more unusual ones. Look at the quality components. Nice big chunky bridge reactor for a big ass power resistor. Japanese 105 degrees Celsius so that electrolytic capacitors. You buy a 50 inch space heater plasma TV and they're only bloody designed to go in a fridge capacitors and they just TV dies it in a year. <laughs> Non-polar. Panasonic, all Panasonic components, even the flyback. 
a nice chunky flyback, made in Malaysia that one. And this is when reliability was at its best. This may be a BPC TV, but these are all Japanese components. And it looks like they're all 105 degrees Celsius rated, most of them anyway. AN124. Huh. Epcos. That company made some pretty good technology, Epcos. They make some um, high grade, uh, high discharge capacitors and everything. And, um, uh, misters. Copper heat sinks. Yeah. This sort of been a Sebwood in Australia. Definitely. Made in Australia. If it was from Asia, it would have been a Chinese made uh, plastic bolted cabinet. But this is actually assembled in Australia in the Sydney plant, which closed in 2006 when it wasn't actually viable to assemble plasma TVs. Here. So it just became um, a service IT department, service centre. A name 7 what? China? Generic, yeah. The 70s are a good time for Panasonic speakers and the 80s. There's no frame right there. There's frame surround, but the frame hasn't gone rotten. That's pretty good, surprising, that the frame's intact. But yeah, this doesn't have a big enough audio ramp in it to have a big woofer in the back. If it did, have a woofer with it right there. I would have had a nice amp inside this. Anyway, let's give it a uh, dust out and um, test. Thompson, it doesn't say it's Western made. It could possibly be though. Anyway, let's give this thing a test. See those filaments glow there, just faintly in that light. This thing, then the light pretty good, but if uh, the girls that pulled some colour at that thing. I could possibly have the remote to these too, if they can find them. I'm not trying to tune a TV here. But this is working quite well. Yeah, the forward slip. Yeah, gotta get a slam motion of that CRT shut down. Anyway, let's put it back together and we'll uh, go on to the next one. Okay, the pesky flyback screw. I always miss that one. There's that flyback, pretty square. Now if you go on Wikipedia and look up Samsung CRTs, this in particular is Samsung's Ultra Slim CRT. Yep, made by Samsung China, for Sanyo. Only Samsung made CRTs that flat. You pretty much put that inside a plasma TV housing and call it a flat screen TV. It is that flat and square. This is a very, 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 very wide deflection angle. I'll clean this one up and preserve this one as an actual, this is an actual, the, the last lot of tubes. Check that out. It even has resistors like that in there. That's quite cool. This thing's filthy. See it here? That snapped off inside there. This was all in one machine. Pick and place, one run, snap it out, and click it in. These are circuit boards are separately done. But this, all one assembly. You can see that snaps out in the centre. Modular, everything's shrunk down. Uh, what plans are here? This is one of the, um, when I started making TVs, crap. That's the brains of the TV there. I was staying the, everything's on that. Made in an easy tuner. There's the audio amplifier. LA420722H ST, a very slim uh, chip. The uh, package is very slim. Jingli, <laughs> Jingli speakers from China. Hey, names 10 watt. They don't seem to have foam surrounds either. They're quite chunky. Wow. That one actually, that actually, you won't get speakers even that good in a flat panel TV. <laughs> no way for tweeters here. Save a couple of cents, I suppose. They made two versions of this tube. This is the slimmest as they got. The ultra slim model, this one. And they were slim, which probably came out to about here. That's only 
that's extremely flat. From the screen to the end of that neck, less than a foot from there to the front of the screen. That's a very slim tube. Pretty amazing. As I said, if you look on Wikipedia, Samsung were the last manufacturer of the CRT and they just perfected it at the last second to get these as squished up and flat as possible. They could have, in theory, made these into a high definition screen for 1080p and that would have been a good, um, yeah, if I can find one like that it'd be nice because yeah, that would actually be um, longer lasting in a bloody plasma. So a deflection coil with a screen that flat the flatter, the slimmer the tube, the more power hard you have to run this. It has to deflect more sharply. A longer and more bulgier protruding, more longer CRT, traditional one, this doesn't have to be driven as hard. Yeah, quite unusual. So I'm going to clean this scenario up and preserve this one. It does have the foot off the smash off the front of it, but this, that doesn't matter. There's a sort of big W on target. I remember in 2007. 2007 I think was the last year that sold these at Target. Target and Big W were selling these quite cheap. About $180 or something. This would have cost you around $180 mark. Sanyo. Anyway, let's give it a dust out and give it a test. Stupid camera says check card again. Bloody camera. Hear that quill? You hear the uh um, frequency of the um, deflection because that thing's pulling so hard to get the electrons on that screen in that little tiny space. That's just unbelievable. Thanks. Yeah, this one, the, the, this is one of the modern ones that cuts the audio out. There's no signal, obviously. That's why I don't hear anything. Anyway, it's going to signal into this thing. Nah, I won't worry about it yet. Do I thought they put a signal in this? And they speak because I've got quite some base room in there. It's got actual the surround is actually a mesh surround, not foam. So they're actually a decent quality. Look at the size of the magnets. They're going to be some bassy speakers. Anyway, it cleaned up quite well in there. Let's see if I can get to the menu, fucking see what I'm doing. Um, there's a light going on to here. I'll try and get to the TV's menu. Menu. Does this have games? We'll find out. No. No games. Jeez, look how thick that bloody glass is. That's about an inch thick. Very thick glass, I tell you that. You can see at the bottom the foot smashed off. It's supposed to be a foot that sticks out an inch or two at the front and the bottom, but it's all been smashed off. That doesn't matter. Very front heavy. That's a thick glass screen. Very, very thick. But yeah. I keep this one just for the sake of the slimness of the tube. An unusual. So yeah, look how amazing how they slimmed them down. Bloody hell. That's almost like a bloody plasma display panel. That is slim. The slimmest CRT ever made. See how to square it and everything. That's just awesome how they did that. Power off. Oh, that would look good in the slam, eh? doesn't actually lock some LG TVs. The guns are warm up. Once it's fully warmed up, the picture, the video signal comes on completely. Some TVs did that, both when you turn them on and off. So you didn't get the cool effect when it turned off on the screen. Some LG TVs did that in particular. The um, guns had to warm up first, then the, the processor would turn the video signal onto the tube. So you wouldn't see a picture until, unless this is fully warmed up. Where traditionally, as this warmed up, the gun, the filaments warmed up, the picture would fade up and brighten up. Traditionally. But uh, the light up TVs never did that. 
Anyway, put this one back together and uh, give this scenario a go. Quick look in here. Yeah, not too bad. 105 degrees Celsius, so the caps. LH Nova. Yeah, generic capacitors. Anyway. Okay, I just found out this was made in 2009, the mold, the date code inside the plastic molding inside here. It actually makes sense. 2009 was the last year of CNEs and Big W. Yeah, definitely 2009 was the last year of the CRT. 2010 they had the they had the um, HD ones, but they didn't they weren't on the market for very long. Because they didn't want a 50 inch plasma which weighed like four of these in one bloody 50 inch screen. And this was heavy enough. Yeah, just TV apart. Matt's a sheet of tube. Genuine Panasonic tube and everything. Yeah, cute little speaker. Good bass response to a speaker like that. 8 ohm speaker. They've folded the um, magnetic shield to kind of look like it's actually moulded in with a basket. But no, they're not like the old Panasonic speakers. 8 ohm, doesn't say the wattage. Made in Malaysia, yeah. Japanese components, machine, Matsushita, there's a brains, all Matsushita Panasonic components. Now Samsung has overtaken the world with the best TV manufacturer and the most dominant. Back these days it was Panasonic. TDK uh, thermistor there, nice bridge rectifier with big resistors. Look at the quality of those components. So reusable in project, it's not funny. Copper heatsink. Nice long tube. That tiny CRT alone is almost longer than this big slim tube. Unbelievable. Look how thick that heatsink is. Oh, that's how you cool things down. MX series chassis too. Same family, MX4M. And this chassis is a MX3. Would you check that out? The same family of chassis. Anyway, let's power this thing up. Made in Japan. Japanese made flyback. Clean that bloody uh, label. High voltage dangerous. Made in Malaysia. Matsushita. Malaysia made flyback with a Japanese made lead and anno cap. Anyway, let's get this TV powered up. I think this on screen display is going to be similar to that one. Power this up. Oof. Big uh, degauss, that one. <laughs> they go out and make some degauss. Yeah, blue screen on. Get of that. Yep, same style and everything. Yeah, it turns off. These make good little gaming TVs. <laughs> good for the last year, probably these little TVs. And there's a set top box that came out of the spare room in that place. Yeah, they weren't touching years. This is the very first set of boxes that were coming out the digital TV switchover in 2005. Okay, what I was saying was after this camera shit the bloody card again, a bloody thing. That's from 2005, that one. The bad capacitor plate set up box, that one. So, yeah, only standard, these are all standard definition. <laughs> so, I got the original plastic on that one from the packaging in the factory. TCO. That's the only one missing it's remote. So that set top box is utterly useless. I cannot access the menu of that set top box to tune it to anything without the remote. Yeah, very cheap stuff. <laughs> TCL, there's the old logo there. It's a funny thing about this TCL company. They actually um, cloned and stole a patent of TDK and TDK sued TCL. Funny story behind TCL. Tetron is second biggest TV manufacturer. It used to be a telephone, a telecommunication company. It's got its video, it's got even got a composite out. But it's pretty much useless, only gets the standard definition channels. No USB, so next to useless nowadays. Unless you like standard definition TV. 
and the rider set to box that I've bloody seen. The TAC. Also a standard definition box. All standard definition, no HD. Next I've got an, uh, has an AV cord too. Yeah, nice big switch. Anyway. This is a most useless set-top box. If you don't have the remote to these set-top boxes, they're useless. So you must have remotes with set-top boxes. You cannot get remotes for most of the bloody things, or universal ones to work with them. But there we are. I can't remember what it was in particular, what TCL got sued over. I think it was like a tape or something. I think it was cassette tape or some patent or something. And TDK was, um, yeah, they got pissed off and sued TCL. Pretty sure it was between TCL and TDK. There was a date code here. Um, 9093. 990? What's this one say? 995. 995, this one. November 994, the earliest. Yeah, mid 90s. Anyway, viewers, put this one back together and that's it. I'll test these later. Thanks for watching.